so dear students the today topic is the pharmacology of mineralocorticoids okay yes, it is the adrenal hormones or adrenal cortex hormones play important role in the regulations of the minerals in the body so that's why it is a steroid in nature so that's why it is named as a mineralocorticoids introduction regarding the adrenal glands so already you know the adrenal gland is the cap of the kidney or it is a suprarenal gland or its exact location is it is a superior to the each kidney or top of each kidney so when glands are present so that glands are known as the adrenal gland so due to these reasons so they are known as the suprarenal gland or also known as the cap of the kidney or cap of the renals so it's regarding the shape it is look like a flat pyramidal and size regarding 3 to 5 cm height 2 to 3 cm in width and 1 cm in the thick it is a two small gland its weight is around 3.5 to 5 g you should be remember this weight because in the future anywhere you are going in the research or you become the research scientist so on that time you should be know the ideal weight of the adrenal gland because so many drugs so they are treat the disease by adjusting the size of the adrenal gland for example so during the stress the adrenal gland size is increases so as the size of adrenal gland is increases it indicates so that person is suffering from the stress okay so that can be also confirmed by plasma concentration of acth because the acth play important role in the regulations of the functions of the adrenal gland so during the stress the acth level is increases so due to increase the acth level so whatever the hormones so they are secreted from the adrenal gland so their concentration is also increases so their deposition is also increases their synthesis also increases so due to that the size of the gland is increases in the stress so it is the indication of the are helpful for the diagnosis of the stress in the persons so whatever the drug you are used so those are known as the adaptogenic drugs or anti stress drug so they can control the stress by decreasing the size of the renal gland or adrenal gland or by controlling the functions of the acth or by neurosing the organs are that is nothing but they can supply the oxygen supply nutrition supply to the organ so like that they can control the stress okay so here the adrenal gland is also known as a life saving gland so the most one of the important gland so in our body it is known as the life saving gland so another system is there so that system is known as the sympath sympathomimetic system so this sympathomimetic system is also known as the life saving system it means without this system or failure of the sympathomimetic system and failure of the functions of the adrenal gland the person cannot be survive it means the absence of the these glands or hormones secreted from the these gland that is the persons can be occurs death within 3 to 15 days it means the failure of the adrenal gland the within the 3 to 15 days the death is occurs so that's why so this gland is known as the life saving gland and this gland is also secrete the noradrenaline and adrenaline and as well as the dopamine so these are the hormones also secreted from the adrenal medulla or adrenal gland so these hormones are neurotransmitter that is the neurotransmitter of the sympathomimetic system so that's why the sympathomimetic system is also known as the life saving system the failure of the sympathomimetic system the death can be occurs because so this noradrenaline or adrenaline so they are involved in the regulations of the blood pressure okay so this blood pressure are regulations of the cardiac output so this is required for the 
to supply the nutrition and oxygen from one part of the body to the another part of the body that is mainly depending upon the our normal blood pressure so that blood pressure is regulated by the sympathomimetic system or adrenal gland so failure of these two system that is adrenal gland and sympathomimetic system the blood pressure is decreases as the blood pressure decreases the cardiac output is also decreases so as the cardiac output is decreases the demand of the organ cannot be fulfilled they do not got the oxygen they do not got the nutrition so due to lack of oxygen and lack of that is a nutrition the organ function was malfunction and gradually the organ was fail that is known as the multiple organ failure that is due to only the failure of the adrenal gland or the failure of the sympathomimetic system so that's why so these both system so they are known as the life saving gland and another rule so this gland is mainly secrete the one hormone so that hormone is known as the cortisol so cortisol is the it is the one of the beneficial hormone in our body it is also known as a anti stress hormone it means so whenever the stress is occurs in your brain or in your body because the stress is always happen on the brain so due to that the brain is under mal functions or the heat was generated in the brain so that can causes the mal functions of the brain as well as the mal functions of the brain it can causes the uncontrolled of the organs or uncontrolled system so due to that the organ system was fail or due to increase the heat in the brain due to stress the brain can be any time it can be damaged but during the stress the brain cannot be damaged whenever the person was healthy our brain was balanced because so during the stress so this gland it can secrete the hormone cortisol so this cortisol it acts as a insulator so whatever the heat was generated in the brain it can be absorbed it can prevent the damage of the brain layers or damage of the brain part so due to that so this cortisol is known as a anti stress hormone if its level is abnormal it cannot be secreted from the renal gland due to failure of the kidney functions or renal function on that time only the cortisol was not secreted so then only the death can be occurs or the shock can be occurs without any risk immediately the death can be confirmed immediately there is no few of second so that is known as a shock that is shock due to stress or thinking anything that is the lack of the cortisol so that's why so this cortisol is the main hormone of the adrenal gland and without cortisol then also the death can be occur due to mismanagement of the or lack of management of the stress so that's why the adrenal gland is known as the life saving gland this is the only reason and as well as the sympathomimetic so they are known as the life saving glands so next one is the regarding the hormones they are secreted from the adrenal glands so there are few hormones so they are secreted from the adrenal glands so they are most important and the adrenal gland it is mainly divided into two part that is the adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla so it is the middle part so this is a triangle so this triangle is known as a adrenal medulla that is the exit center parts of the adrenal glands and that medulla is covered by a certain layer specially it can covered by the three layers okay so those three layers is known as the adrenal cortex and those three layers so those are denoted as a gfr it is not a glomerular filtration rate it should be remember like that the adrenal cortex is made up of the three layers so they are remember as a gfr g stands for the zona glomerulosa okay g stands for zona glomerulosa and f stands for zona fasciculata and r stands for zona reticulata okay so the zona glomerulosa it is the outermost layer of the adrenal cortex it can secrete the one hormone so that hormone is known as the min 
मिनरल मिनरल कॉर्टिकॉइड्स ओके इट इज सिक्रेट द वन हार्मोन सो दैट हार्मोन इज नोन एज द मिनरल कॉर्टिकॉइड्स दैट इज दिस वन एंड द सेकेंड लेयर इज नोन एज द जूना फैसिकुलटा इट कैन सिक्रेट द सो दिस दैट इज द ग्लूको कॉर्टिकॉइड्स एंड इनर मोस्ट लेयर दैट इज द थर्ड लेयर जस्ट अबो द एडनल मेडला सो दैट इज नोन एज द जूना रेटिकुलटा इट कैन सिक्रेट द एंड्रोजन सो दीज आर द that is the first layer that is the outermost layer is the between layer that is the center of the layer that is between the zona glomerulosa and zona reticulata and just below the zona fasciculata and above the adrenal medulla so that is the zona reticulosa so these three layer they can separate the certain hormones so zona glomerulosa it can secrete the mineralocorticoids as the name indicates so, so these hormones is involved in the regulations of the electrolyte like sodium calcium potassium even it is involved in the regulations of the water and involved in the regulations of the hydrogen ions and regarding the glucocorticoids as the name indicates it is involved in the regulations of the glucose so it is the secreted from the second layer of the adrenal cortex that is the zona fasciculata it can secrete the hormone so that is the glucocorticoids and the mid that is the last layer that is the zona reticulata it can secrete the androgens okay so that is androgens like estrogen and testosterone so like that the male is also having the estrogen and female is also having the testosterone okay because these are also secreted from the adrenal cortex so during any stress or any depression or any ill of the persons in the male and female after recovery the some male cater become the female caters or maybe voice changes or the female caters becomes the male caters regarding the body physics or regarding the voice because only the female do not having the testes but still the testosterone is secreted from the female during the stress so these hormones are during the depression these hormones level was increases so were also in the female the testosterone level is increases and in the male the estrogen level is increases due to that only any problem in their life during the examinations or neat preparations in the 12 so due to failure of the neat preparation that candidate can undergo the stress due to family problems or any other or Uh, during the society so during that, that stress so these hormones are level is increases so after recovery so that boys some characters becomes the female characters or female characters some becomes the boys characters but here here dear students you don't worry about that if you manage your stress by with the help of the meditations or with the help of the nutrition automatically so these hormones level was normalized because from the adrenal cortex so these hormones level secret in the negligible they do not affect that much of the physiological rule okay if they are increases so then only they can changes the intergender characters if on certain conditions if you are going for the healthy nutrition or management of the stress with the help of the meditation automatically so these hormones level or adrenal cortex functions can be normalized so due to that so there all characters can be reverse okay so like that the adrenal medulla it can secrete the mainly two hormones they are categorized as the catecholamines like epinephrine nor epinephrine or dopamine because so these are the sympathomimetic drugs so these are also known as the catecholamines because so these drug they can contain the catechol in their structure from the sympathomimetic only three drugs are there like epinephrine nor epinephrine and dopamine they can contain the catechol in their structure or in their moiety when you are regarding the study in the medicinal chemistry on that time you can understand so they what is the catechol so due to presence of that catechol so these hormones so those are known as the catecholamines so they are secreted from the adrenal medulla and these are mainly involved in the regulations of the blood pressure or regulations of the heart rate or regulations of the cardiac output and another hormones so they are secreted from the adrenal medulla so those are known as the peptides 
examples are the somatostatin already you know so this somatostatin is also known as the anti growth hormone because it do not abolish the activity of growth hormone but it can oppose the actions of the growth hormone by inhibiting the git motility or by inhibiting the absorption of the substance from the git so due to that the somatostatin it can decrease the growth of the body so that's why the somatostatin is known as the anti growth hormone so that is also secreted from the adrenal medulla and another hormone important or substance that can secreted from the adrenal medulla so that is known as the substance p you should be remember so nowadays they can ask in the questions on the gpat regarding only the substance p and this substance p is secreted from the adrenal medulla and this substance p involved in the regulations of the pain so what are the pain is occurs in the organ in the body so that message can be conveyed to the brain so with the help of the nerve or with the help of the hormones so that is substance p it can carries the message regarding the pain from organ to the brain so that's why the substance is substance p is also known as a neurotransmitters or neuropeptide because the neurotransmitter definition is they secrete from the neuron and involved in the transmission of the message from one part to the another part but this substance p it do not secreted from the neuron but it is involved in the transmission of the message from organ to the brain from one part of the neuron to the another part or from one part of brain to the another part of the brain regarding the pain so that's why the substance p is also hormone as well as the neurotransmitters are generally it is known as the neuromodulators and same substance p is also involved in the to cause of the inflammation so that's why it is also known as the autocoid i think in the some few year last few year they asked in the gpat regarding substance p in the same question which is the following neuropeptide is both neurotransmitter as well as the art, local hormones or autocoid that is the answer is the substance p because it is known as a neuromodulators because it can send information regarding the pain and it is known as substance p because it is involved in the to cause of the inflammations okay so that is the example for mineralocorticoids the example is the aldosterone corticosterone so these two hormones so they are involved in the regulation of the electrolytes and examples for the glucocorticoids that is the cortisol and cortisol okay and examples for androgen from the adrenal cortex that is the estrogen and testosterone so these are the various hormones so they are secreted from the adrenal cortex and as well as the adrenal medulla so next one is the classifications regarding the mineralocorticoids so mineralocorticoids so they are mainly classified into two class that is one natural mineralocorticoid so they are secreted from our body from the adrenal cortex regarding from the zona glomerulosa example is a aldosterone okay and second one is the second classification that is a synthetic mineralocorticoids example is a deoxycorticosterone acetate it is also known as the doca so already i think you hear this name in pathophysiology regarding the management of the hypertensions and as well as in the pharmacology practicals regarding the model for the hypertensions so that is the doca doca is the deoxycorticosterone acetate if its level is increases then automatically the person is suffering from the hypertensions so in the animal experimentally you can induce the hypertension in the animal by injection of the doca salt so that's why you should be remember doca is a synthetic mineralocorticoids it is denoted as deoxycorticosterone acetate it is involved in the to cause of the hypertension because it is involved in the accumulation of the sodium in the cells so due to accumulation of sodium the calcium is also accumulated so due to accumulation of calcium the contraction is increases so due to contraction of the blood vessel contraction of the cardiac muscle the that is the force of contraction is increases then automatically 
the blood pressure increases due to this reason so this doca salt is used as a inducing agent for the hypertension or the study of the drug acts as a anti hypertension agent so what the first the scientists like you people they administer the doca then automatically the blood pressure of the animal was increases they can monitor with the help of the spigmo manometer that is known as tail spigmo manometer then after that they can administer the drug if that drug decrease the blood pressure means so that can indicate so that drug is having the anti hypertension agent so that's why you should be remember the doca so another example for synthetic mineralocorticoids that is the fluorocortisone so did fluorocortisone it is ha having the activity like mineralocorticoids as well as glucocorticoids activity it means the fluorocortisone it is involved in the regulations of the minerals along with regulations of the carbohydrates or regulations of the glucose because it is act having the activity like both mineralocorticoids and as well as the glucocorticoids so this is the classification of the mineralocorticoids so next one is the regarding the regulation so this mineralocorticoids or aldosterone in our body is mainly regulated by the potassium so as the potassium concentration in the blood increases automatically it can give signal to the adrenal cortex with the help of the acth then it is involved in the to decrease the elevated level of the potassium so that's why the potassium is involved in the regulation or secretion of the mineralocorticoids and as well as the acth so acth is the enter pituitary hormones it is also involved in the regulations of the mineralocorticoids but uh, the regulations of mineralocorticoid secretion by potassium and acetate that should be the minor or negligible so, and as well as the dopamine it is also involved in the regulations of the mineralocorticoids and as well as anp the neuropeptides like anp and bnp so these are mainly causes the that is the mesenteric vasodilatation so due to mesenteric vasodilatations the potassium ion hydrogen ion they are accumulated in the body so that can give signal to the adrenal cortex then the hormone secretion is increases another most important or major hormone it can control the 90% of the secretions of the mineralocorticoid that is the angiotensin 2 through a system so that system is known as the ras that is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so this system it can about 90% or major it can control the secretions of the mineralocorticoid so whenever so this system is activated then the angiotensin 2 is formed so that angiotensin 2 it can causes the act on the adrenal cortex it can causes the release of the aldosterone so that release aldosterone it is involved in the regulations of the mineral so like that the ajdc2 is the major hormones or major octopeptide it can involved in the regulations of the aldosterone okay or mineralocorticoids okay so the deficiency of the mineralocorticoids it denote the person is suffering from the hyponatremia or person that is the deficiency of sodium or the person is suffering from the hyperkalemia if you are monitor the plasma level of aldosterone if it's malfunction its level is decreases so then the person is suffering from the hyponatremia that is the deficiency of sodium or hyperkalemia that is the hyper secretion or presence of the more concentrations of the potassium then acidosis or muscular wasting then hypotension lack of sodium the hypotension can be occurs or even it can causes the shock due to deficiency or low secretion of the corticosteroid if the corticosteroid secretion is high it denotes that person should be suffering from the corn syndrome or hyperaldosteronisms and hypernatremia or hyperolemia hypertension and hypokalemia it denotes the person should be suffering from the or the sodium concentration is increases and the potassium concentration is the decreases so that indicates the mineralocorticoid concentration secretion is more in our body from the adrenal cortex so regarding the form mechanism 
so these aldosterone it can mainly acts on the aldosterone receptor so these aldosterone receptors are also a nuclear receptors okay so like a thyroid hormones like a growth hormones receptor so these aldosterone receptor is also known as the nuclear receptors so as the, they are bind the adrenal receptor they can causes the gene expression so due to gene expression they can form the transcriptions of the dna so as the transcriptions of dna increases in the inside of the nucleus automatically the formations of mrna is increases so as the mrna level is increases the synthesis of protein is also increases so due to that these aldosterone it can causes the syn activations of the promease enzyme that is the promease protein and as well as protein kinase d so these promease or protein kinase it can activate the certain protein channels so those are known as the sodium potassium atpase or sodium potassium pump so due to activations of sodium potassium atpase or sodium potassium pump the permeability of sodium is increased that is the entry of the sodium from in, that is the from urine to inside the blood is increased that is the reabsorption of sodium from the kidney was increases due to actions of the aldosterone on a aldosterone receptor so those are present on the kidney so these aldosterone receptors so these are mainly present on the kidney so where they can activate the sodium potassium pump so due to that the more sodium they can enter from urine into your blood so that process is known as the selective tubular reabsorption so that is helpful for the reabsorption of the sodium then prevent the loss of the sodium from the urine through a urine so that's why the aldosterone it's mainly play important role in the to enhance the plasma concentration of sodium by acting on the aldosterone receptor by enhancing the permeability of the sodium so that's why the aldosterone is a mineral corticoids it's play important role in the regulation of the sodium so as the sodium level in the blood is increases automatically water accumulation is increases so it is one funda is there so where the sodium concentration is high automatically the water accumulation is also high so that's why so along with sodium so this mineral corticoids it is involved in the regulation of the water so as the water level is increases automatically the body fluid level is increases so as the body fluid level is increases the blood pressure is also increases so due to hyper secretion of the aldosterone or mineral corticoids the person is suffering from the high blood pressure or hypertension if it is negligible it is normal level then it can involved in the regulation of the sodium and regulation of the water level in the body during the thrust or during the deficiency of the water in the body on that time only the aldosterone was religious basically through the angiotensin or potassium or dopamine or many other hormones okay so next one is the regarding the pharmacological action so this aldosterone it can mainly acts on the central nervous system so where it can enhance the sympathomimetic activity so yeah the sympathomimetic increase in the cns automatically the memory power or cognitive function was increases or the uh, that is attentions or alertness is also increases it means the mineral cortical is also involved in the to maintain the arousal through a enhancing the activity of the sympathomimetic system and second it is also acts on the kidney or it is mainly acts on the kidney during the deficiency of the water or when the water level in the plasma or blood was decreases so on that only the aldosterone was religious so that released aldosterone it can mainly acts on the kidney on the that is the on the aldosterone receptor where it can enhance the reabsorption of the sodium and water and other side it can causes the excretion of potassium and albumin it means it can enhance the excretion of potassium and excretion of albumin but it can enhance the reabsorption or recollecting of the sodium and water 
and as well as the mineralocorticoid is also involved in the excretions of the hydrogen ions. It means it is helpful for to avoid the acidosis or the deficiency of the mineralocorticoids. The hydrogen concentration accumulations in the body was increases. So due to that, the person was suffering from the acidosis. So due to acidosis, all organ functions was malfunctions. So due to acidosis only the organ was failed. So then only the person was suffering from the diabetes mellitus, cancers, or many other disorders. But the mineralocorticoids it is a beneficial hormone. It can enhance the secretion or excretion of the hydrogen ion along with the potassium and along with the albumin. So that is helpful for to prevent the acidosis. But in other side, it can enhance the accumulations of water and sodium. Then it can cause the hypertension also. Okay. So next one is the it can act on the pancreas and as well as the muscle. In mainly it can alter the functions of the beta cells. So as the beta cell function is altered, the insulin secretion was decreases, and as well as it can cause the insulin resistance. So due to that, the plasma or blood sugar level was increases due to malfunctions of the beta cells or lack of the insulin. It means the mineralocorticoids it can enhance the blood sugar level or over secretions of the mineralocorticoids the persons can be suffering from the diabetes mellitus. So that's why so those people they having the hypertension as well as they are suffering from the diabetes mellitus because that is the role of the aldosterone it is involved in the cause of hypertension as well as it is involved in the cause of the high sugar level that maybe he is suffering from the diabetes mellitus and the same aldosterone it is also acts on the heart and vasculature then vasculature is nothing but the blood vessels so where it can cause the inflammation because it can cause the accumulations of the water or accumulation of fluid so if the fluid is more accumulated it cannot be drainage or cannot be recirculated or cannot be removed from the body then it is responsible to cause of the inflammation or due to accumulations of the water the tissue the size of the tissue or tissue shell was increases so that condition is was known as the hypertrophy and also it can alter the functions of the remodeling and it can cause the fibrosis that is the swelling of the leg or accumulations of the fluid in the leg due to hypertension or high blood pressure if your blood pressure is increases then also your leg was swelled if unnecessarily if your leg was swelled so that condition was known as the fibrosis so that is due to increase the blood pressure by a aldosterone because aldosterone one side increase the blood pressure and another side it can cause the accumulations of the fluid so that fluid can drainage in the leg tissue so due to that the leg was swelled so that condition was known as the fibrosis if you control the aldosterone function then automatically so that's fibrosis was the correct and as well as it can cause the dysfunction of the endothelial cell that is the cells of the blood vessels so you to dysfunctions of blood cells uh, that is the blood vessel cells then automatically the function or vascularity of the blood vessel or elastic property of blood vessels can be decreased so that is also responsible to cause of the accumulations of the bad fat on the wall of the blood vessel so that can cause atherosclerosis and further it can responsible for to cause of the hypertension and another it can cause the vasoconstriction due to malfunctions of endothelial cells or accumulations of the sodium so as the sodium is accumulated the calcium is also accumulated in the blood vessel so due to accumulations of calcium the blood vessels was contracted so that condition is known as the vasoconstriction so like that the aldosterone in the cns it can maintain the arousal and in through the kidney it play important regulations of the sodium level and regulations of the water and involved in the excretions of potassium and excretions of the albumin and excretions of the hydrogen ion and prevent the acidosis but it can responsible to cause of the diabetes mellitus by altering the functions of the pancreas and functions of the muscle and it is also involved in the cause of inflammation and hypertrophy 
by altering the functions of the vasculature or heart or by causing the accumulation of the water in the tissues so these are the various pharmacological action that can related to the aldosterone so next one regarding the pharmacokinetics it is slowly absorbed from the oral route but it can be well distributed throughout the body okay if we never administered in the externally okay it is the well slowly absorbed from the oral cavity but it can be well distributed it is mainly metabolized in the liver and excreted through a urine and regarding adr so due to accumulation of fluid the increase the, it can increases the fluid volume so that increase the fluid volume responsible to cause up the hypertension and as well as due to accumulation of fluid in the tissue the person should be suffering from the allergic reactions due to only the accumulation of fluid in the body or in the leg or in the organs so that can cause the allergic reaction and regarding the uses it is helpful for the treatment of the addison disease so addison disease is the one condition so due to accumulation of hydrogen ion the acidosis is occurs or it can causes the malfunctions of the brain especially in the cerebral cortex due to that the memory power cognitive functions whatever the functions of the brain are there all are the altered so that is due to only suffer it is also helpful for the treatment of the salt losing adrenogenesis syndrome it is why because it can cause the accumulation of sodium that is helpful for treatment of the salt losing syndrome along with the treatment of the addison disease so dear students if you have any doubt please comment on this video or give a message on the my personal whatsapp group thank you